So we are live on YouTube, and let me go ahead and start recording on my end. Record on this computer. Let's go ahead and start recording on my end. And this is Male Entrepreneur Podcast, episode number 128. And we are live in three, two, one. All right, welcome back to Male Entrepreneur, the podcast for men who win with your host, Pradeep Sangha. Pradeep, how are you doing today, man? Pretty good, man. Pretty good. We just got off recording the last episode with my younger brother, Harj. Uh, that was good. And as you and I started talking about other things in terms of, um, you know, him being uh, or his personality, and I mentioned, you know, him keeping me out of trouble when I was younger in my 20s when I used to drink a little bit too much uh, just brought back a lot of good memories I think um, in, in terms of uh, good memories and maybe not so good memories but it was very sentimental in terms of how how uh, you know how good he's actually turned out so I was just thinking about that and I think that's probably going to be the theme of the day for me <laughs> nice um, we talked a little bit I used to have uh I was the older brother. My younger brother passed away uh, back in 2012. And um, I miss him. I feel like uh, a big part of it's weird. I don't think that you can ever have a friend that will be as, I mean, we mentioned it and your brother was like, yeah, you can, you can have like a friend that is a surrogate brother. I'm not sure though. I, I'm not sure that uh, if you have a good like bond with your brother, I don't think there's anything in the world that comes close to that. I, I think you're right. I think there's something to be said about that term, right? Blood is thicker than, you know, water or whatever it is, but there is, there is reality to that. You grew up with each other. You experience the same things with the, with the person you share genetics with the person, right? There's so much you do share. So I completely agree from that standpoint. When I hear about you talking about your brother, you know, and it hits home because I'm just, like I said, it's just, I, I can't imagine that um, uh, in terms of what you were going through. When you, when you think of your brother, what is the, you can say the best memory that you have of him? Oh man, you're putting me on the spot. So this is, I'm going to probably tear up about this. When we were little kids, like little kids, I'm, I'm saying I was probably seven years old. Um, just a little bit of background. We grew up dirt poor and welfare food stamps. A lot of times we were homeless living on section eight. And my dad was a uh, drunk a lot. He was in and out of prison a lot and very abusive when he would get drunk and just had a lot of anger issues. And there was this one time I ate a can or I snuck into uh, the pantry and I ate a uh, half of a can of peaches and I was so terrified when my mom found it I was dumb I was a little kid I was stupid and I put it back half eaten and, and my mom found it and she was like who who ate this who put these back because we didn't have a lot of food and she she was preparing or she had it saved or prepared for something and um, I was afraid to admit that it was me and my dad came home and uh, lined us all up and was like who ate it I'm gonna beat everybody if you if one of you doesn't admit that you ate it and my little brother lied and said that he ate it and he took an oh. ass for me and that moment changed my life that was like the I was like I will never let somebody take a punishment for I felt so bad about it and I felt like such a coward and I felt I don't know, man. It just broke me a little bit. And at that point on, I was just like, I'm, I'm never going to let anything, I'm never going to let fear stop me from doing what I know is right. And, uh, it was one of those, it was one of those very character building moments, but it was one of those moments that I realized I had more respect for my brother than I had for myself. Mm. And, um, <clears throat> it's, it's hard. I get choked up talking about it, but that's the kind of guy my brother was my brother was the guy that would sacrifice himself to help avoid somebody he cared about getting hurt. And, uh, it's just one of those memories. It, it happened when I was like eight or nine years old, seven years old, I don't know, very young. And it's one of those things that never left me. It, it made a huge impact on my moral system, my values, my personality. And, uh, 
made me love my brother like just just uh, have so much respect for him and um I apologized for it to him years and years later but I still never fi- I every time I think about it I still get like a sinking feeling of like man how could your brother be so brave and you were such a, a coward and I mean we were kids but that's the kind of that's my brother was that kind of guy he was the kind of guy that would sacrifice himself to protect the people he loved and uh yeah I'm tearing up right now thinking about it <laughs> now that's a that's an amazing story that just I I Wow, that's that's pretty powerful when you think about it. Just that sacrifice that you make for the people that you love and the things that you learn. Because you you said something that really stood out for me, which is you, you end up having sometimes more respect for your sibling than you do for yourself with certain things. And we talked about competition last time and we talked about that. And um, and now that I think about it, yeah, there's certain areas of, of life, for example. You know, my brother looks up to me, but I look up to him as well. And there's certain things that, you know, sometimes I do wish, you know, maybe I wish I, my character was a little bit more like his in this area or, uh, you know, in a different area or whatever that might be. But I think that's the good thing about having siblings is that, uh, again, you touched on it before. It's not the same when you have friends, but as a sibling, there's that, there, that is, there is that constant comparison. There's that constant check. And I think that's important to have as you grow up because you have a sounding board that's, you know, someone that's living with you that, as I mentioned, shared your genetics, has similar thought patterns, perhaps, and, and has gone through similar experiences. Because for you, I think you, it's the same thing. And for my brother and I, you know, you were talking about your father, how he had challenges. Uh, my father had challenges with alcoholism as well. So my brother and I faced those challenges. And I think because of that, we, we kind of grew together as well. And I think we kind of became closer as a result. So again, you know, we're kind of going down an interesting path, but I think it all comes down to, you know, if it doesn't kill you, it makes you stronger. And I think that's ultimately what it's about in life is, you know, learn from others, love from others. Um, uh, Man, I'm going down another rabbit hole, but I, I was just, as we were recording the first episode, my kids were screaming in the background because they were, you know, fighting with each other. My daughter and my son were fighting. And uh, before the episode, I actually had to go out there and have a little bit of a lecture with him. And I said, what are the, what are the principles of our family? My wife is just looking at me like, okay, now he's going to start another lecture. And, <laughs> and the kids were lined up and I basically said, what are they? And they're both of them, they knew him very well, cooperation, kindness, and respect. And then I was thinking, I'm like, you know, we've been living off this, but there's one thing that we are missing and that's love. And so that's going to be added to our you know, our family principles or our family values, I was actually just going to print them out prior to uh, this episode. But that love piece goes so far, man. It goes so deep. And it's just so uh, uh, as as I'm writing this book, too, I realized I'm like, you know what, I'm not talking about love as much. Um, And so if you haven't heard this episode, I'm writing this book specifically for guys, and helping them achieve a, a more fulfilling life. But one of the things I haven't really touched on as much, you know, I talk about performance, I talk about psychology, I talk about emotions, but I don't really talk about love. And so that's one of the things that I got to put in there is, is this world revolves around love, man. Everything that we do is, is around love. And it's such a powerful feeling. Like, look at two guys, you and I sitting here having this conversation about our younger brothers, yours has passed and the sadness that comes and even the happiness that comes as a result of that. Me sitting here thinking, I don't know what I'd do if I lost my younger brother. But that just tells you even as men, how vulnerable we are to that emotion of love. Mm-hmm. It's so powerful. It's so wonderful, man. Even I'm getting teared up just thinking about it, but <laughs> you know, it's, it's, uh, it's so important. I think that we just miss out on so much levels or so many different levels Maybe that's what this topic should be about in this cha- uh, in this episode, man. Maybe we can talk about that, the previous topic on another episode, but maybe we should talk about love. Maybe we should talk about how this world needs more love because I think, I think we are in desperate need of love right now with everything that's happening, especially in the U.S. with all the turmoil that's happening there. Is that, man, why can't, I don't know. I don't know about you, Nathan, but you know, I've subscribed to a couple of, I'm not going to say, media um, articles or media places but I just like to be up to date with some of the most important stuff that's out there and I can tell you man I don't see anything about love 
I see things about the economy. I see things about um, even even in relationships. I was looking at it, and then and, and even the relationship blogs that I were that were being sent to me in my email were, uh, you know, about divorce and about cheating and sex. I got this other weird one about some weird crap. I don't even know what they were talking about. Um, but I was just like, what about the basic concept of love? What about loving? Um, and I'm going to throw it over to you, Nathan, man. What, what do you think, man? What do you think is happening in the world? Uh, I think there's a couple things. S- deep down, psychologically, human beings are, we're geared to look out for danger. It's a survival mechanism that I don't think we ever evolved past. So things that evoke anger, fear, uh, rage, those type of things, they grab our attention. And I think the media has, I mean, they're biz- the media's are businesses, they're corporations, they're ran by, I mean, I think here in America, we have like 16,000 different media organizations and they're pretty much all ran by like five different corporations that run all of them but they're all for-profit organizations. And uh, years ago, Facebook, Twitter, um, they all kind of came out and quietly admitted that the anger, the anger content is what gets shared. Mm -hmm. The stuff that when people look at it and they get angry, they're more likely to share it than if uh, we have the meme about the cats and everybody loves sharing cute cats on the internet. But the truth is, people love to share things that make them angry and they want to, they, they want to have that two minute hate where them and all their friends can point the finger and scream at somebody that they're mad at. And that's what gets shares. And so the media, I mean, they're going to put out what gets shared because that's how they get people back to, to their website. And that's how they get, uh, we get this many views per month. So please spend this much money in advertising with us. And so the media is, is, financially incentivized to to put out stuff that goes to our lower frequencies Mm -hmm. and as humans it's it's a lot easier to get overtaken by those lower frequencies especially as you get older you find out that you know love means you put your guard down and you get hurt and so you're like oh screw this love stuff uh i'm gonna be on the defense and um yeah, man. I, I, on on all sides of the media, whether it's the left wing media, the right wing media, the alternative middle ground media, it's a it's a lot of um, be afraid, be angry, uh, and I don't just blame the media. It's us as human beings. That's what we react to. That's what we share. That's what we are attracted to, and it's you probably know this because you talk about mindfulness. It's, it takes a conscious effort to look for the good in life. It takes a conscious effort to, I mean, 600,000 interactions happen between black people and white people every day. And 99% of them are perfectly awesome. Hey, how's it going, George? Hey, how's it going, Bob? How are you doing today? How's the wife? How's the kids? But then there's the one where one of the two acts all crazy, and that's the one that goes viral on Facebook. Same thing with citizens between cops. Thousands of interactions a minute, and most of them are, hey, your tail light's out. Just want to let you know. Go get that fixed. Stay safe. See you later. There's the one where, oh, you're oppressing me because of my whatever. Oh, yeah, well, I'm going to pepper spray you, and that's what goes viral. Um that's what we're geared towards to pay attention to. And uh, it takes a conscious effort to say, just because that's what's sensational, that's not what I'm going to give my attention to. That's not what I'm going to give my focus to. And you have to consciously make that decision. And it's a hard decision for people to make because most people don't even realize they have the power to make that decision. Yeah. And you, and you mentioned a couple of things there. The, the, the first piece is that when we, whatever we look at the most is what we program our brain to get accustomed to so if you like negative stuff if you like gossip if you like whatever it is you're gonna your brain is actually getting more hardwired towards that and be attracted to that so be conscious i always tell my wife you know don't don't watch news don't watch that crap so we are at a we are we are not anti-media because i the media needs to exist 
because there's positive things about the media. I don't bash the media because they're a, biz they're a business. They need to do what they do because that's, that's basically what they do. It's because the population has allowed them to do what they're doing. But put that aside, because I, this is beyond media. This is basically just how people operate in general. You, you also talked about something else in terms of frequency. And so if you are out there and you're not very familiar with frequency, everything that we basically think or feel, every thought has a frequency, every emotion has a frequency, and that frequency actually travels. It is within us, it travels through our cells. So at a cellular level, we feel that frequency. So that's why stress has a different frequency than happiness. Stress has that frequency and it can actually destroy your cells. And that's why stress is a big leader of disease. But this frequency of love is this higher frequency. And so the premise behind frequencies is that the higher that you go in terms of frequency, the closer you get to consciousness. If we were talking and taking a look at it from a spirituality perspective and consciousness is this feeling of, you can say feeling bliss, feeling one with the universe, but here's my interpretation because I, I, you know, again, this isn't about, you know, our practices or what we do or enlightenment or anything about that. But in the States where I've been in that meditative period or state, and I felt like, you know, the weight of the world was lifted off my shoulders. Like I had no worries. Like I was absolutely able to be myself or whatever that was. It was a total feeling of bliss. And that feeling of bliss was a feeling of love. That is the one way I could put it. And is, you know, my wife asked me, what do you feel when you go into those states? And I basically say, I just feel love. That's basically what it is. It is this feeling of warmth and love and it's incredible. And I can see why some people get addicted to meditation because it's their way of getting out of the real world. And now we're getting into a different realm. But, you know, there's people that will meditate for the sake of being enlightened. That's not the purpose of meditation. The purpose of meditation is to ground yourself, to reset yourself. And, and yes, you experience these other feelings, but you still got a real life to live with, right? You can't sit there and meditate 24 seven. But the, this, this, you can say this emotion of love is very powerful. Some of the, you can say philosophers or even yogis or religious teachers don't even consider love an emotion or content an emotion or peace and emotion. They consider it to be the fundamental principle of the universe is when you are one with the universe, it's not a, it's not an emotion. It is what you are. And so love is so powerful. If you think about it, just a small drop of love, can do so much. A single memory, as we've shared, as Nathan has shared about his brother, what does that do to you inside? It just makes you feel a completely different way. And that's the power of love. I started doing something actually, and I'm, I'm, I would like to consider myself a very loving person. And I would like to consider myself as a, a very loving father. But I started to do something even more with my kids when I realized that, you know what, I don't know if they're getting enough love from me. And now I just literally just hug them and hold them and give them this period of just pure love, like not a short hug, not a, you know, just like a kiss on the cheek, but it's just this period where we just hug each other. And my kids, I, they just love it. They absolutely love it. And I love it. Like, it's just this feeling. And I just put everything aside. I put all my work aside. I put all the crap aside because I'm one of those guys that is so task focused. I'm like, I got to get this and do this and get this finished. But that period of time that I'm able to just absorb their love and give them love, man, it is the best part of my day. It's absolutely incredible. I, I think we've all been like in a, in a situation where somebody walked into the room and instantly the tone of the room, the feeling, the vibration of the room shifts they walk in in a bad mood and all of a sudden everybody's walking on eggshells or they walk in in a good mood. Some, we all know that one person who is confident in themselves. They love themselves. They walk into a room. They're like, Hey, what's up? And they bring the spirit. They bring the energy up. Um, we can, the way that we're feeling about ourselves, the way that, I mean, loving ourselves is an important thing as well. Uh, the, we can permeate that energy. It's, it's not something that's, it's not something that like stays inside of us. And I think right now, a lot of people don't love themselves. And a lot of people 
um, haven't been taught to love themselves. They've been taught to uh, hate themselves. You've talked about comparing ourselves to others. Um, there's a lot of that that goes on in the world and a lot of people are angry and a lot of people are, they, they uh, trying to keep up with the Joneses and they're miserable. And um, a lot of that I think goes out into the world. And I think that one, one uh, really important thing is, is to find the things and think about and, and give attention to the things that you do love about yourself and take time to do that self care because by doing that, you're going to raise your own Mm -hmm. vibrational frequencies. You're going to raise the frequencies of the people around you. And if we all did consciously do that, or if just most of us or some of us did that, um, we would start having better relationships, better communities. And I think that a big part of, uh, of the problems in the world right now is that not enough of us realize how much power we have just by shifting um, our attention to, to uh, taking time to do that self-care. Man, that is so powerful. I, that is probably the most powerful part of, I think this entire conversation is that self-love piece. You know, how do you, how do you, how do you, put that into words but basically there's um i can't remember which philosopher it was but he talked about you know you can't give an emotion to someone else that you don't have inside of you yourself and that's truly what it is if you want to there's people out there that are loving there's people that are caring but if you truly want to give love you have to have that for yourself firm believer man and and now that you bring this up even for me there's times where I have to like literally sit there and be like, ask myself, do I love myself? Like, do I truly love myself? Yeah, I'm doing all these great things and these cool things, but do I love myself? That's a tough question to ask yourself. Mm -hmm. It is so tough. And then you say, okay, if I do love myself, what am I doing for myself? How am I showing myself that I love myself? Mm -hmm. You know, those are, these are the kinds of things that we need to do that self care, that pampering, Um, And it doesn't have to be big, even telling yourself that, yeah, I'm a good person, right? I'm a loving person because we hear it from other people. Maybe we hear it from our mother-in-law. Hint. Maybe we hear it from some other place that we're not good people or whatever it is. Um, And and you second guess yourself or we see it on social media. Hey, this person is this fit or they're driving this car or they have this much money or they're having this much influence. And who are we? You know, these are the things that we are so easily convinced by others that we may not be lovable or we don't deserve the love um, or whatever it is that it's, it's, it's almost, man, it's a joke these days. If I was, if if I'm going to be completely honest, I think a lot of social media is a joke. That's just one component, but I think it is a joke. I, you know, I, I see people posting, um, you know, just the crappiest stuff in terms of their vehicles, their money, their jets, whatever that is. I tell my wife this. My wife is a very beautiful woman. She is absolutely gorgeous. She is, uh, and she also likes the fancy things in life. And she likes, you know, she's got a nice, you can say, uh, a set of jewelry, for example. And sometimes she'll post things. And I ask her, I very kindly ask her, I say, you know what, if you're going to post something, make sure you're very conscious of your posts. Because you have to understand, there's going to be two people, two trains of thought for people out there. There's going to be the the person that says, hey, I want that. You know what? I want to look that beautiful or I want to have those things. And, you know, my wife has worked very hard. I know, you know, not taking anything away from her. But then there's that other group of people. There's that young, impressionable group of women, for example, that are like, I can never be that beautiful or I'll never have that jewelry or that life or whatever it is. And those are the women that are feeling down about themselves. Those are the women that don't have that self love. So I've asked her, I said, if you're going to post something, please post something that is for both, right? That gives them both some hope or some feeling or whatever it is. I think we just need to be a little bit more conscious, uh, Nathan, about what we say, especially uh, you and I are influencers in some degree. And what we post, for example, or what we say, even the simplest of words have such a profound impact. And you know, more words more than anybody because, you know, you're in the copywriting space, but we might not see it, but a simple comment. And I, in the last episode, talking to my brother, you know, him and I joke around, 
But I look back in terms of some of the things I've said to him when I was younger, and I know that they've impacted him. I know that he's got still some challenges from that. And, uh, you know, I don't know how to make that up to him. But these words that we say to other people are so profound and so powerful that it impacts their life. And if we're going to do anything for me, and I, I, I know this kind of sounds like a soapbox talk maybe, but I think we just need to share more words of love. Like just that simple, I love you, or I care about you. You know, these things are just so looked over these days, man. I don't, I don't know what it is. I mean, I'm not feeling down and out, but I just, this, this thing, this topic of love is so powerful that I think we just imagine what we, what we could do if everybody just for a single day posted things about the people that they love or who they love, reached out to those who love, like what would that do? for this world. I wonder what that would do. That would be amazing. Okay. So <laughs> a weird podcast episode, <laughs> you guys talking about love on a show called the male entrepreneur I, <laughs> for people that this is their first episode listening. They're like, what in the heck is this? I think it was an important subject though. And uh, I, my final note that I'm going to say out, uh, on our way out uh, there's a book called the four agreements. And one of the agreements is be impeccable with your word and understand how much power your words have over the people that you care about. And, uh, when I watch social media and when I watch mainstream media, I realize that not enough people are aware of how much power their words have over the people that they influence. And, um, I second, I second your, notion that we need to be more impeccable with our words um anything else before we're out of here Pradeep no this this was a you know a touching touching episode for me man I I got a lot to do I got a full day of client meetings and stuff like that but you know I, I think coming out of this for me um and for those of you out there listening I would just say you know what is it that you can do one or two things just to make yourself feel loved and actually love those around you I think that could just totally change your day Absolutely. Pradeep, thank you again for bringing this message and uh, making me talk about some stuff I was uncomfortable talking about, man. Um, YouTubeformen.com is where people can check out the YouTube videos. Mailpodcast.com is where they can check out the podcast episodes and uh, definitely make sure that you're subscribed on either so that you don't miss episodes in the future. And until next time, man, we will catch you later. Yeah, I can't wait, man. <laughs>